do you guys really think that Birkin and Kelly is the only bags that Hermes is ever going to make their like hype bags because surely in the next 10 years there's going to be another bag that comes out from Hermes that may be seen as iconic as a Birkin or Kelly. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Chess. I was inspired to make this video today because I was on Facebook and I do kind of loiter in a few of the designer Facebook groups, you know, the Hermes ones, the Chanel ones, the local Australian designer groups, and I love following what people are talking about, you know, spicy topics and all that. And I noticed some a lady, and I'm not gonna put pictures of the post because they're private groups, but a lady posted a picture of her at an Hermes boutique with a crocodile pink pico tin. And she posted in the group, oh, I just got offered this pico tin in like crocodile in Rose Extreme. What should I do? And the responses on the post were like, you know, some people were saying, what do you mean what sh you should do? Like do whatever you like, or you should be able to figure out like if you can afford it or whatever. And uh, one person wrote, unless it's a Birkin or a Kelly, um, any other Hermes bag is just a consolation prize or something along the lines of that. And that really made me think, is it worth only collecting Hermes or going on a journey or whatever? just to get the Birkin or Kelly. And is the Birkin or Kelly really the pinnacle of all Hermes handbags? And is anything lesser than really uh, worth it or worth buying? Or should you just skip it all? Because I find for me personally, it made me reflect on my own collection because most of my collection is not Birkins and Kellys. I, I have over 20 Hermes bags that are not Birkins or Kellys at all. Perhaps they would look at my collection and think, you know, well, they just settled there for less than a Birkin or Kelly. But do you guys really think that that's the case and that Hermes non-quota bags are not worth collecting? <laughs> because the ones that hold the value the most or that are seen as the most beautiful and uh, better investments seem to be the Birkin and Kelly. I obviously like Hermes non quota bags. One of my favorite bags actually is a Rose Extreme Pico Tin, um, not an alligator, but it is uh, in Clemence leather. And I wear this a lot and I found it's always been a great bag to wear. I love dressing it up with different charms and it was my first ever Hermes bag. If my first ever Hermes bag was a Rose Extreme Birkin, would I love and wear it as much? Honestly, I would love a Rose Extreme Birkin. I mean, who wouldn't? But I honestly have to say that sometimes a Birkin or Kelly is not as easy to incorporate into your daily life as a Pico Tin. So for me, I find for my current lifestyle, Pico Tin works better. Not only because it's much cheaper than a Birkin, but I managed to pick this up pre-loved for, uh, you know, less than the retail. Whereas sometimes Birkins, you have to, if you want to buy them pre-loved, you have to pay over retail. Now Birkins 30 is actually around $20,000 in the Australian boutique. So it's not cheap. Whereas a, you know, a pre-loved Picatin, you can pick up for $3,000. So one might, might say, just skip the Picatin and, you know, save up for your quota bag. But I just find that it's not always appropriate to wear a Birkin or Kelly. That being said, if this Pico tin was in alligator or crocodile, it would cost uh, a lot more. And it would probably cost the same amount as a quota bag. And one may think that, you know, maybe the crocodile Pico tin wouldn't hold value as well as a Kelly. But does that mean that you shouldn't get it? See guys, this is what I mean, like, why do we have to listen to what everyone else is saying? Because the Kelly bag, for example, didn't become cool until like decades after it was invented. So I think the Kelly bag came out in the 1920s. I actually have to put the date down uh, below me because I can't remember. And it was popularized in the 50s because Grace Kelly was seen wearing it. Now, in today's day and age, the Kelly is still uh, a very sought after bag. And I've noticed on my Instagram, like a big trend towards wearing even vintage Kelly bags, like people wearing older ones. Uh, box calf seems to be very trending at the moment. You know, these neutral colors, a uh, rouge H. It's just a very classic and, uh, you know, one would say a great investment for your wardrobe because it never goes out of fashion. But it wasn't always like that. It didn't become popular until decades after it was launched. Do you guys really think that Birkin and Kelly is the only bags that Hermes is ever going to make 
their like hype bags because surely in the next 10 years there's going to be another bag that comes out from Hermes that may be seen as iconic as a Birkin or Kelly. It just seems to me that we're really um, narrowing our minds as to like the potential that you could enjoy a bag uh, before it becomes hyped as well. Like, you know, Hermes have so many bags to offer, not just the Birkin or Kelly. Uh, I saw a lady the other day wearing a Halzan um, in real life and she really loved it and worn it and had like pen all over it, like it was really trashed. But you know, you could see that she really enjoyed wearing that bag. And would one think like it was, she would have been better off getting a Birkin than a Halzan? Like, no, not necessarily, because sometimes these Hermes Norcota bags are more practical and uh, lesser known as well, which can be an advantage in this day and age where people might be a bit scared to get mugged or something like that. Should the lady who was asking in the group if she should buy the uh, pink crocodile picotina, should she have bought it or should she have skipped it and used the money to buy a Kelly instead? I don't know guys because the thing is if you love the bag and you're gonna wear it then who who cares like what if in the future a picotin becomes a quota bag probably very unlikely but you never know guys I'm sure back in the day no one would have thought that the Kelly bag would become this um you know idolized <laughs> it's just because of social media and what people are saying you know that it's you know an investment bag and all that it's grown this kind of hype. It's good to be aware of being too influenced by others as well because people's words can be very powerful and if somebody were to say to this lady don't buy that crocodile picotin because it's a bad investment she really might take that advice on board and refuse to buy it and then who knows if in an alternative life maybe if she bought that picotin it would be her favorite bag of her whole collection and maybe she would have saved the money to get a kelly and then found that she never wore it you know guys like it's really hard to identify what a, a good designer bag purchase is and i think a lot of us fall into the trap of listening to other people's advice and it can be hard to look deep inside and and also think like what do I really like and what is really going to work out for me and to be honest you don't really know until you buy a bag sometimes whether it was a good investment for your wardrobe or your life or whether it is going to really work out for you. I mean in terms of bag investments uh, sometimes bags you can make money selling them I suppose like a Birkin one would say um, it's a better investment than if you bought a you know uh, alligator pico tin uh, but it doesn't really matter if you're not going to sell it in, at the end of the day. Like a lot of us uh, bag collectors have bags that we probably will never sell or we don't buy in the, with the intention of selling. So resale value doesn't always matter. And I would actually say sometimes if you're thinking of resale value, Birkin and Kelly is still extremely risky to buy, particularly depending on the color and the shade. As I said, you might spend $20,000 uh, buying a Birkin 30 at the boutique, but if it's an undesirable color or if the popularity of the Birkin dives, well, if you do plan to resell that in the future, uh, well, you just don't know what will happen in the future. Like look at the Chanel Classic flat, for example. Um, now it's $18,000 in the boutique. You'd be lucky to sell that for more than, you know, $12,000. So it's not necessarily you know, a good investment anymore like it used to be. A lot of people used to say only go for the Chanel Classic flat because it's such an investment and will never go out of style. But I don't really think that that's necessarily true. Like it actually isn't a good investment and it's highly replicated. And a lot of people don't really find it that functional or wearable as well. So why should you go and buy it? Is it better to buy that? Or should you buy a Chanel 19, which you might find more squishy and comfortable as a crossbody, even though it's not as good an investment? You know, a lot of us like to buy these bags because they're seen as the most popular or the most collectible. But if they don't necessarily work for your life or you, you just don't reach for them, that might be, you know, not the best. Um, I will say that there are definitely bags that you may collect that just be might be collectibles and just might stay on your shelf. But for me personally, I do like it if I find a bag uh, easy to wear and something that I grab for a lot, particularly if it's a bag that I've spent a lot of money on. I want it to be a bag that I wear quite regularly. And for some reason, like for me at this stage of my life, I don't reach for my like Kelly bag as much because it is a Kelly bag and I find that when I'm in the city or something like that, it is 
more recognizable and I don't feel as comfortable wearing it even though I love it as a collectible but I bought a Belide 25 which is a lot more low-key I would say and um, not as obvious and I find that I wear this more and that's just me at this stage of life at the moment in the future I'll probably wear my Kelly more than my Belide but some may say you should have skipped that and saved for uh, a Birkin 25 but I just don't know if that's the case. The last few years, I've always been saying I want to get a Birkin 25, but then I'm always distracted by a non-quota bag that I fall in love with more and that I find that I actually wear more. So I'm also thinking like, should my next bag really be a Birkin 25 or is it should it be a bag that I really feel like I'll wear? Yeah, I don't know guys. Sometimes I think, what if I didn't buy any non-quota bags and just stuck stuck to uh, Birkins and Kellys? What if I just had a collection of like a few Birkins and Kellys? Would have I have been better off? And um, I, I like to think that probably not. I think it would have been much more boring to just have Birkin and Kelly. And um, I know that some people do this with Chanel as well. They don't buy the seasonal bags and they just go for classic flaps. But you know, guys, what if you get sick of the classic flap one day? You're just gonna be stuck with a whole lot of flaps so I don't know I guess um yeah for me I probably don't have a lot of variety in terms of brands at the moment I definitely just have Hermes but in terms of like bag styles I would say that variety is the spice of life sometimes it's nice to have bags that are not the most desirable or not the best investment or yeah, sometimes they're just like bags that you actually probably prefer wearing more and you never know these bags as well might become popular in the future like as i said um a bleed might become a quota bag in 20 years who knows guys we really don't know what will happen in the future and perhaps a birkin will be co completely undesirable in 10 years so yeah I, I, my advice from this video is don't listen to what other people say guys follow your own gut feeling and don't worry if uh, somebody says, you know, your bag is not worth buying because it's not a good investment or, you know, not as desirable. Because sometimes, like, people with the coolest style have a style that is very different to other people as well. And it's not always good to follow what other people are doing, I would say, you know, in many cases. Be your own trendsetter, I would say. Let me know, do you think that the Birkin and the Kelly are the only Hermes bags worth buying? Or do you think it's better to uh, diversify your collection? Or, or even, do you think Hermes bags are a complete waste of money? Would love to know your opinion. And I'll talk to you guys on my next video. And yeah, sorry for blabbing on a bit much. I just had a lot to talk about. See ya.